45년 전 진공 청소기에 빠진 사람이 있습니다. 집 청소를 하다가 먼지를 빨아들이지 못하는 청소기를 보고 온 해법을 찾았는데요. 제임스 다이슨, 영국의 발명가이자 산업 디자이너인 그는 21세기 에디슨이라 불립니다. 세상을 놀라게 한 청소기는 그의 이름에서 따왔죠. Welcome to EBS. We die man swap. Great minds. My name is James Dyson. I'm an inventor, an industrial designer, and I'm the founder of Dyson. First of all, to become a designer and then an engineer, and then to start developing new technology to make radically different products. So um, I was pushed out of the company. My father died when I was very young, and so we children were made to do the housework. And one of the things I had to do was use a vacuum cleaner, which had a filthy old cloth bag, and it smelt horrible because we had a dog. So whenever you vacuumed, you got this horrible smell of dust and stale dog. And um, fast forward uh, 20 years, and I have my own house and young family. And I find my vacuum cleaners doing the same thing. It's smelling of stale dog and stale dust. And by the way, it's not appearing to pick things up off the floor, not appearing to suck things up off the floor, which is the same experience I remember as a boy, young boy pushing around the vacuum cleaner at home. So I, I thought, well, wait a minute, 20 years has gone by, there's been no improvement. And it seems to me the problem is this smelly old bag. So is there anything I can do about that? And that was lodged in the back of my mind. And then uh, one day I went to a timber yard to get some timber. And I noticed on the roof of this timber yard were these huge cyclones, which is a sort of upside down wine bottle, uh, about 30 meters tall. And I followed the pipes down and I saw that it was sucking away the very fine sawdust from all the wood machines inside the timber yard. And I suddenly realized what was going on here, because I vaguely knew about cyclones separating dust by centrifugal force, rather than a sort of membrane filter. Uh, so I rushed home, I got quite excited. I rushed home and I made a very crude model of much smaller, of course, instead of being 30 meters tall, it was about um, half a meter tall. And I connected that to my vacuum cleaner. And so my vacuum cleaner had a sort of miniature version of what I'd seen on top of the sawmill. And pushed it around the house with the dog sort of barking as I did it. Anyway, it appeared to pick up and collect everything. So I thought this is a much better vacuum cleaner because it's separating the dust by centrifugal force into a container and it's not sending all the air through the bag, the collected bag, with the stale dog hairs and stale dust in it. And it's not going to lose suction. It's not going to clog. It's not going to block the filter. So I, this is what I want. I don't know whether anyone else wants it. Maybe, maybe they're quite happy buying bags. I don't know. But I hate buying bags. I can never find the right one. You have to buy them very frequently. And they're just an unsatisfactory engineering solution. Um, so when you pat a cushion or, or um, the carpet or knock the floor, what is blown about is actually something the size of cigarette smoke. And cyclones were only good down to 20 microns, but I needed it to be good to half a micron or a third of a micron. So I had to improve the shape and the, how a cyclone works. So that was my first task.
When I'd done that, I discovered that things like dog hair or carpet fluff or human hair isn't separated by that type of cyclone. It just goes completely through it and into the motor and causes huge damage. So I had to develop something different to deal with what I call the nasties, the sort of um, nails, uh, coins, uh, diamonds, if you like, uh, dog hair, uh, human hair, and fluff. And I built 5,127 prototypes of my first vacuum cleaner. And there are occasions along the way where I can say there was a serendipitous moment, but actually it only occurred because I was trying. I was building prototype after prototype after prototype. When you first start, the idea you have is almost certainly the wrong one. But through countless failures, as you test each prototype, you get closer to making your idea work, or you diverge and you try something else and that works better. But you must go through this process of trying out ideas and failing many, many times as part of on the route to, to getting to the, the result. Well, I, I believe it's a, a fundamental human um, desire to make things better. Well, I, the thing is that I develop consumer products and I'm a consumer and so is everybody else here. The whole company use our products. And um, of course we discuss what goes wrong and what we don't like and what we don't like about other people's products that we use. So the starting point is one of, of I mean, could be anger, but it's just criticism, really, of what's around at the moment. And it, it can be, you know, that it doesn't dry your hair properly or it makes your head too hot if it's a hairdryer um, or it uses too much electricity. Hand dryers are a good example. When we started the hand dryer project, um, hand dryers were 3,000 kilowatts or more because they were using heat to dry your hands, which is actually not very nice for your hands. But um, So we developed a, a hand dryer that used 700 watts instead of 3,000 watts uh, and was much kinder to your hands and was quicker because it wasn't trying to evaporate the water off your hands, which is a very expensive thing to do. So um, the, the motivation an idea often comes from the failure of something that's around at the moment. The failure doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't work. It could be that it uses too much water, too much electricity, too many resources, it's too heavy, whatever it is. So the, there's, there's often a very easy starting point that you want to um, eradicate or improve upon. I never like to think of myself as a business leader. I mean, what we're about is coming up with a better technology and a better product. So we're, we're, we're product people. We're a manufacturer who makes, develops new technology and makes more interesting products. And if we're successful, we're only successful because we do that well. So that's what we all concentrate on here. I never really think of it as a business. It's a, it's a, uh, we, we develop technology and make products. That's, that's what we do. No, oh, I'd love to share them, but of course I mustn't for confidentiality reasons. Yeah, but of course I can't share exactly what we're doing, but I'll try and share a few things. Uh, we're a family business and we think very long term. I mean, sometimes 15, 20 years out. Uh, for example, with energy storage, uh, batteries in other words, battery technology. We started that 10 years ago. And we're, we're now building a factory to introduce some new battery technology. We did that with electric motors. So what we tend to do is a light on a technology, and we also did it with 360 degree vision cameras on our robots. So we're a light, which we started ten, again 10 years ago, and it's now on the market and being very successful. Um, so we're a light upon a technology and develop it. And some, that can take quite a long time sometimes. And then, use it on one or more products that we're, that we're about to make. So it's, it's, it's about thinking very long term, developing technology, and then sometimes you make a product you hadn't thought of making, 
because the technology happens to be very suitable for it. So it isn't a structured business plan where we say we're going to go into home automation or we're going to do this. We develop a technology we think is interesting and then suddenly decide, discover a product that would really benefit from it. And that's motors, for example, which we started developing 25 years ago. Very high speed electric motors. We initially did it for vacuum cleaners. But then we discovered that we could do a tiny motor for hair dryers and make hair dryers much smaller and lighter and more interesting. So it's, it's the technology that often gives you the product idea, not the other way around. So we're not, a, we're not a structured business in the sense that we decide to go into certain fields because they're good fields to go into. If we had thought that, we'd probably be making mobile phones. What we're doing is, is we finding a really interesting technology that really makes a difference. And then a product appears that really is able to use that technology to its full effect.